Marco, how are you? Good seeing you. Thank you very much for having us here in beautiful uh, Malibu, California to uh, the first test drive of a very, very special car, right? This is. Is it for us, for BMW, this is a big deal. I think it's more than just for BMW. I think uh, this is a car that pretty much is incorporating what other manufacturers have tried. And then yeah. I think uh, in a... Uh, 10, 15 years, every car is going to have something of, of what this car has, right? You're exactly right. Whether it's the carbon fiber construction that makes it light and safe, or it's some of the, the plug-in hybrid technology or the electric vehicle technology that's in this car. I think you're right. We'll be seeing this on a lot of cars in the future. And so let's go and drive. Uh, believe it or not, the car's already up because it's Perfect. electric. So <laughs> safety first as always. Um, as we were saying, this is a plug-in hybrid. So this car combines not the best of two words, the best of three words. I think. You know, that's a good way to describe it. You're right. We have an electric motor up front um, that drives the front wheels. We have a, a three-cylinder gas engine uh, transversely mounted in the rear, um, driving the rear wheels. There's a little motor generator on that engine as well. And you can drive lots of different ways, all electric, um, just with the, uh, the engine up front or all-wheel drive with both work. Uh, interior, I mean, no, let's start from the outside. This yeah. car is like breathtaking. And one of the things is that this car was uh, introduced as a concept model, what, like almost like five years ago? It's been about five years. And uh, nobody believed it was gonna be made because actually I think like, it, it makes it official debut at uh, Mission Impossible for a movie, right? Yeah, that's right, that's where it was. And that car from there doesn't look too different to this. It's almost the exact same car, yeah, and that's really surprising people. It's a it's concept car design in terms of the exterior, and it's actually concept car sort of technology underneath the skin as well, and we've brought it into real life. Yeah, that's something that uh, most uh, manufacturers can't do anymore, I think, because they put a lot of money maybe into a concept car that it's pretty much impossible to make. Yeah, this yeah. is the opposite of that. That's right. No, and it's and it, you know what? And it looks just right out here in California. So tell us a little bit about the cues, uh, the design cues from the exterior, because they're very particular to the BMW i brand. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of clues. First, being what we did, we're taking this electric car market and a plug-in hybrid market very seriously, and we've created a new sub brand, and it's called the BMW i brand, and it's like the BMW M brand sort of a sub-brand of very yeah. high performance cars. This is a, a sub-brand where we're gonna have a family of very efficient, clean, yet fun to drive cars. And what we wanted is there's certain design elements, design keys that are, would be featured on all of these BMW i cars that let people know as that car drives by, A, it's a BMW, and also it's a BMW i. Uh, one of the cues, for example, in the, the it's, this car is very aerodynamic. One of the things that are like, really really cool it's like the spoiler I guess that you call it that goes in the back on the sides of the car yeah and it like gives an opening and that's very unique it is and that's you know and it's not just there to look good that's a that wing um, although it's a very contemporary version of an old type of wing that you might see in the yeah. back of a car it's really managing the airflow um, it's trying to minimize lift to create a little downforce yet do so at very low drag um, I know it, and it looks futuristic but it's very very functional and that's part of the dynamic uh, efficient technology or like mantra from BMW, right? You know, if, if you want to make a car efficient, there's lots of things you need to do. And one of those things, you've got to make it very aerodynamic. So there's a lot of um, functions, there's a lot of uh, elements of this exterior design that are really all about making it slip through the air as easily as possible. So the construction of the car, carbon fiber from the very beginning, almost everywhere. Yeah. Um, batteries are heavy. There's about 220 pounds or 100 kilograms worth of batteries in this car. Um, and what we wanted to do to be, it has to, it's a BMW, it's got to be fun to drive. So we had to save weight elsewhere in the car to make up for the weight that the batteries take. So we've made the car out of carbon fiber. It's very strong, it's very uh, rigid body, um, yet it's very lightweight. And uh, also there are other materials, like the exterior panels are actually plastic, they're not metal. Yeah, the, the fender, the four fenders um, are made out of a thermoplastic material. It's like what you see on front bumpers, so it's, it takes a little bit of a deformation without being damaged. Um, the side panels on the doors are made out of, there's aluminum skin and the hood's an aluminum skin. And we have recycled carbon fiber on the roof, exterior roof panel. 
recycle carbon fiber. That's something yeah. that you have never heard before. I know. This, well, I guess you're right. We what happens in the manufacturing process of the body shell? There are as we trim the components. There's there's shreds. There's leftover carbon fiber. So what we do is we put it through a process that allows us to make a roof panel out of it. Um, and weight up here is important because it's above the center of gravity. Yeah. And the more weight we save up here, the better the car the better handling, dynamics. Yeah. I'm talking about the driving, the dynamics of the car. So you can you start the car in a what electric mode. When you get in the car, you you don't have to. You can just drive this like a regular car. You start it up, and actually the car will pick. Um, really the best driving mode automatically. If the battery's fully charged, you may take off electrically. If the battery's not charged, if it's depleted, then the engine will start up and you'll go using the engine power. And while you're driving, the engine will charge the batteries. Or when you brake, the brake energy is collected and used, uh, the power just goes through a generator and charges the batteries. So what does that do to people, the traditionalist people who really want to control the car anymore? Is that well, possible with this car? It still is. I mean, we have, we have three different modes to choose from. Um, you can choose an e-drive, e which is all electric drive. And as long as you've got battery power, um, you can drive electrically. You can try the normal mode, the comfort mode, and it'll use a blend of, of either gasoline power from the engine or electric power. Or you can go into sport mode and then everything is ready to go to drive, um, to really have an engaging, fun drive. And uh, what about the uh, range and uh, a lot of uh, electric cars, hybrid, uh, plug-in hybrid cars, get people some range yeah. anxiety, but if, not the case. Well, nothing to worry about here. We've got a, a 42 liter fuel tank. Um, the car goes over well over 300 miles um, with everything charged up and it can drive indefinitely on gasoline. So run out of gas, you just go to a normal gas station and off you go. So, and that's what I was referring to at the beginning about talking the best of three worlds. I mean, really have everything, every option here. And this is very different from the i3, which is purely electric. Yeah, yeah. Now the i3, yeah, it comes two ways. The i3 is A, there's a battery version, purely electric. And then there's another version with has a range extender so that if you were to run out of uh, battery power, the little motorcycle engine in the back starts up and charges the battery. So, but this is different. This is a, this is a, a hybrid, a plug-in hybrid. So if you plug it in at home, you charge it up, you can do 20, 22 miles, all Pure electric. electric. Okay, to ask you something. How do you make, uh, it has a three cylinder uh, engine back there, right? It does, yeah. How do you make that sound? I mean, that is <laughs> great. amazing. Well, you know, like most manufacturers, there's a lot of things we do to, yeah. to create it's a, secret. a pleasant <laughs> sound. Um, and yeah, you know what? Sounds important when you're driving. And it is it. actually the sound. I'm not sorry for interruption, yeah. but it's very important it because in electric cars, you say eh, it's electric, it's fast, but I have to fill it with my five senses. And uh, you're right. And when you're driving enthusiastically, it's it's also it's like an, an audible tachometer. It's telling you what the engine. Yeah. You know the engine, how fast it's going. You know how hard it's working, um, and that's all important to making the driving fun. This car, as as we said before, was. Uh, presented first five years ago in the midst of a very bad economic crisis everywhere in the world and now BMW has committed to this and uh, it, it, it's amazing so this tells you how, how much you can do I guess and uh, I guess I, I, we're saying also like uh, the future is like endless we don't really know what's gonna be in five years there's gonna be some of these but it's this car is gonna change pretty much everything. Well, you know, a lot of the technology that you see in this car will become more available in other cars um, and cars at lower prices. So um, this is a really exciting platform for us to to feature this technology. And then as as things become more, as the technology matures and it becomes more affordable, you will see it in, in a lot of other cars. So the new BMW i8 here in California. And uh, you mentioned price. Uh, what's what are we talking about here? About one hundred thirty-six thousand. Um, there's not a lot of options on there, so this car, basically, as we see it today, uh, very well equipped uh, for one hundred thirty-six thousand. And with all of that, really, I mean, there's other plug-in hybrids, high-performance plug-in hybrids that are like five times the price. There are. <laughs> There are some others that might have uh, some kind of a technology, but they're not as nice looking and all this technology with the carbon fiber. So, do you guys really see any competitors in for this car? You know, we don't really feel we have a direct competitor. Um, so, we, you know, we're we pushing the technology farther than it's been pushed before, and I like it a lot of ways. We're pushing um, the design 
Um, and really, the, no one is doing anything just like this. So BMW is going to be a hundred years in two years, right? Uh, Correct. It's 98 now. And uh, you mentioned this morning that you consider this car to be one, and if not, the most significant car in the company's history. That's a lot to say. It is. It's, well, you know, because we're we're very much a forward-thinking company, and we're um, we're looking at the next hundred years, and we we're taking electric cars seriously. I think this is the, we have to be more careful with how we use fuel and global warming, yeah. and uh, how we build cars and use cars. And this allows you to have all of the fun that you want to have in a car, yet you can do it feeling good. You're doing your part to really minimize its impact on the environment. Excellent. Well, you said you're going to look forward for the next 100 years. Let's look forward for the next 100 miles today, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much.